The African-American legend series highlights the accomplishments of blacks in areas as varied as aviation, sports, business, literature, education, and politics. We will examine how African-Americans have succeeded in areas where they had been previously excluded because of segregation, racism, and lack of opportunity. I'm your host, Dr. Roscoe C. Brown, Jr., and joining us on today's program is Lloyd Williams, president of the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. And Lloyd Williams and Harlem go very much together because of Harlem Week. So could you begin by talking about Harlem Week, how it started, how Harlem Week has gotten to be Harlem Month, maybe Harlem Year? Uh, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, Roscoe, it's, it's such a pleasure to be with you. You are a person who I have the greatest personal and professional respect and admiration for, and it's an honor to be here. Thank you. Harlem Week, it's, it's, it's almost impossible to say this, but next year, would you believe Harlem Week is celebrating its 25th mm -hmm. anniversary, a quarter of a century. I can hardly believe that. It started as a one-day event. Um, the purpose of Harlem Week initially was to get Harlemites 25 years ago to feel better about themselves. It's, uh, it's very difficult to remember those times, but that was when uh, former President Ford was said New York dropped dead and New York was at its lowest ebb. And when New York City is at its lowest ebb, you can imagine what's happening in the Latino, African American, and Caribbean American communities. So Harlem was uh, really going through difficult times. On the other side of the coin, the question was, is the glass half empty or half filled? We chose to focus on the glass being half filled. And so our objectives with Harlem Week was for Harlemites to see the greatness of their community, the greatness of its history, its culture, its location, and its promise and potential. So we started with a one-day event, and it was very funny because uh, the first day was the renaming of 7th Avenue Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard. That was the same uh, f first official act of Harlem Day. And now 25 years later, or 24 years later, Harlem uh, Day has become Harlem Week, and Harlem Week has become Harlem Weeks. Uh, but the objective has changed. Has At, changed? Mm -hmm. has changed because initially our focus was Harlemites to feel better and, and proud of themselves. As we started accomplishing some of those goals, 25 years ago the Apollo Theater was closed, there was no new Schomburg Center, there was no uh, a black fashion museum, there was no studio museum in Harlem, the new facility, there was no new National Black Theater. Mm -hmm. We can go on and on in terms of what did not exist. And so as Harlem has grown within the last few years, uh, our mission has changed. Uh, one of our thoughts was economic revitalization, and now that's no longer uh, something that we have to scream from the top of the roofs. It's happening, not necessarily the way we want it to or it should be, but it is happening. Uh, as we talked about people moving back to Harlem and coming back home, that's happening. As we have seen the cultural institutions open up, that's happening, uh, whether it's Aaron Davis Hall or the new Schomburg or whatever, those things are there. So now as we look at Harlem Week, we see our mission to be different. We see our mission to deal with things that the Honorable Percy Sutton told us 20 some odd years ago about the potential of tourism. We're dealing with the issue of economic development. We're dealing with the issue of educational development and cultural development. So where we're moving now with Harlem Week is the, for us to promote mm -hmm. to Harlemites, to New Yorkers, to uh, persons across the country and across the world the vast potential of our community. Now, Harlem Week, Harlem Day, started as a project of the then Uptown Chamber of Commerce. And then how did it develop? You, the president of the now it's called the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce. Uh, how did it develop? How did you get people to buy into it? Yeah, I know you had the Urban League, the Urban Coalition at that time, some of the banks. Uh, how did you get that 
as a grassroots type activity to bring more of the people who have uh, concern about Harlem together? Well, timing, of course, has mm -hmm. something to do with everything, but the Harlem Commonwealth Council, the mm -hmm. office of the Manhattan Borough President, who was then Percy mm -hmm. Sutton, uh, the New York Urban Coalition, mm -hmm. um, those were some of the major groups mm -hmm. <coughs> that came in. At that time, the president of the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce, which was then the Uptown, mm -hmm. was Honorable Hope R. Stevens, mm -hmm. got them to come uh, into it. But as it related to the banks, what we did was we we shifted the focus from the social the discussion mm -hmm. to the business discussion mm -hmm. in terms of why it was in their best business interest to be involved with the revitalization of Harlem. It was not always easy and is not easy today. But we did not take a social approach, we took a business approach. And some of it is the fact that it was the Chamber of Commerce with a business focus mm -hmm. that was looking at the economic rationale and benefits for the revitalization of Harlem that got others to buy in. If mm -hmm. it were more social and cultural, it might have been more difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, though, if I recall correctly, a lot of what you did in those early days was cultural. I remember you gathered around the state office building and have that big program with all the dancing and the singers and the, and the uh, outstanding uh, cultural and um, entertainment figures. Uh, now you have sort of decentralized uh, Harlem Month or Harlem Weeks goes from 155th Street down to 110th Street, right. almost from river to river. Uh, how were you able to get other parts of the African-American, Caribbean, Latino community to, to buy into this? Because it is kind of a uh, mosaic now, rather than just African-American. Well, part of that was um, having grown up in Harlem and spent my life going all across mm -hmm. Harlem. What street did you grow up on? 120th Street, then between Lenox and 7th mm -hmm. Avenue, now Malcolm X and Adam Clayton Powell Jr. Boulevard. Um, having grown up in Harlem, uh, we were adventuresome. We went all over our community and we saw the diversity of our community. It was a different time. Uh, people uh, were more, were at that point initially uh, friendlier. We all saw ourselves as one community. It was easier to move backwards and forwards. So what we looked at is going back to the old formulas of neighborhoods working together, neighborhoods in one community. Uh, Harlem is a great mosaic. You go to one block, it's Jamaican. You go to another block, they're from South Carolina. You go to another block, they're from Illinois. So, but what we understood is that the African experience, no matter what our language is, mm -hmm. no matter what country we went to, there's a commonality of culture. And so we started talking about what we have in common mm -hmm. as opposed to the differences. Mm -hmm. And of course, you, in developing your entertainment activities, you had activities ranging from sports to drama to music to dance to African drumming to uh, Afro-Caribbean music, etc. And then uh, you did something I thought was very unique. You began to honor significant individuals from the Harlem community in specific areas whether it be finance or the arts or education or politics. And you've been able to keep this going for 25 years. Uh, and each year, does it get easier or harder? Uh, it, it, it's, it gets, it's both. Mm -hmm. Because you, we need to go in new directions mm -hmm. all the time. You can't stay in one position. Mm -hmm. The needs are different, the interests are different, the timing is different, the politics are different. And there's a constant change in, uh, on the Harlem landscape in terms of who is who and what is what. Uh, but in our community, first of all, our sense is that all people of color live in Harlem. Mm -hmm. We say that there's a Harlem frame of mind. So, of course, the uh, Brooklyn people might disagree with you about that. Well, well, you, you see, Harlem, uh, it, it depends on how you look at it. Yeah, okay. I'm not talking about geography. I I'm talking you. about our culture and our history. Mm -hmm. And so persons who live in the Bronx, 
persons who live in Brooklyn, persons who live in Roxbury, in Cicero, in Watts, mm -hmm. are in a Harlem frame of mind. Mm -hmm. As Langston Hughes said mm -hmm. uh, so eloquently, as goes Harlem, so mm -hmm. goes black and Latino America. Mm -hmm. So Harlem is the cultural, spiritual, educational, political capital mm -hmm. of the African experience mm -hmm. in America. And what we've done with Harlem Week really is we've gone across the country to assist others in, in working in their community. The, the uh, uh, African Arts Festival in Atlanta is an outgrowth of Harlem Week. The Kali Ocho Festival in Miami is an outgrowth of Harlem Week. The Essence Jazz Festival, the music mm -hmm. festival in New Orleans is an outgrowth of Harlem Week. The African National Festival in Detroit. We've worked with all of these cities and many of them have sent persons to Harlem to work with us during Harlem Week mm -hmm. to figure out how to promote their community. So we're really not interested in a geography that is from 90th Street to 168th Street from Harlem River to Hudson River. We're concerned with the state of mind of people of color and people of goodwill. So with that frame of reference, we do a lot of events, Harlem Week events in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of Harlem Week events in the Bronx. We work with the Carnival Committee in Brooklyn to strengthen what they're doing because all of it is important to all of us. Of course, on the political side, this does give uh, Ray some of the problem because it has been alleged that the Harlem politicos have tried to control the African-American political involvement, not only in the state, but in, in uh, the nation, in a sense. Uh, and part of that is based on the leadership of people like Adam Clayton Powell and Percy Sutton and Langston Hughes and others. But the other part of it is that you talk about the African diaspora, what you're really talking about. Sure. The, there is some sensitivity about Harlem being the center of the African-American diaspora in the United States and the Caribbean. How do you respond to that? What, what is kind of uh, answer do you have for that? Because that is something that you and I have heard and has been written about fairly widely. Well, um, I see that really uh, to be a political issue with a mm -hmm. small p. Mm -hmm. um, when there are elected officials who are trying to identify whether they're more important than another elected mm -hmm. official, uh, then they get stuck with that. My bottom line is real simple. Uh, if there's someone in Brooklyn who needs help, I'm supposed to help them. Uh, the, uh, the, if there's someone in the Bronx who needs help, I'm supposed to help them. When I say Harlemite, mm -hmm. I don't mean where someone lives mm -hmm. or where someone works. And people who want to get stuck with the geography, mm -hmm. that's part of their own weakness. When uh, the Irish community is dealing with their interests, they don't talk about where are, where's that Irish population. They talk in a broader perspective. When the Jewish community is dealing with their interests, they're not talking about Crown Heights or something. They're talking about Jewish interests as well they should. When we're talking about Harlem Week from the vantage point of Harlem Week, we're talking about the interests of Caribbean American, mm -hmm. African American, Latino people, and African people. Mm -hmm. And we don't care where they live, where they mm -hmm. sleep. Uh, we just want to be out there to help them. And uh, I'm not overly concerned with, you know, who's on first, uh, because the bottom line is uh, we all better get on first together. Now, the uh, economic revival in, in Harlem has been pretty significant. Uh, some have chosen to call it the New Harlem Renaissance, particularly in terms of home ownership and development of uh, businesses. To what extent do you find that that's a growing reality, or has it reached its asymptote, it's leveled off? Uh, to what extent is the fear that many of us had about the white community coming in and taking over Harlem, to what extent are those real issues anymore? Well, it's, um, there's, there's no question in my mind that the revitalization, economic, housing, um, uh, construction, et cetera, uh, is, is moving forth at a rapid rate and shall continue to do so. 
Uh, the question in my mind is who are the ultimate beneficiaries of Harlem, uh, Harlem's renaissance mm -hmm. and revitalization? The, as you well know, the first Harlem Renaissance was a cultural, educational, mm -hmm. spiritual renaissance. That which we loosely call now the second Harlem Renaissance is more brick and mortar or, uh, Renaissance. Uh, and I think to put that into perspective, one has to understand what Harlem is and where it is. Harlem is the most strategically located section of the most strategically located borough in the most strategically located city mm -hmm. in America, meaning in the mm -hmm. If Manhattan goes up to 256th Street as we know it does, well then where is 125th Street within that context? But even more importantly, uh, the, the connections of Harlem, the bridges, the George Washington Bridge, 181st Street Bridge, 155th, 45th, 35th, 25th, Triborough Bridge, etc. Harlem is the most centrally located section of New York City. Now, therefore, uh, the issue that many of us must remember is that the name Harlem was Harlem long before it was black or Latino or Caribbean. Uh, it has always been named Harlem since the Dutch. So it's not, the name Harlem isn't tied into a color, and as a result, we can be moved out as quickly mm -hmm. it, uh, as we moved in or quicker. So therefore, I am concerned very much concerned about this renaissance and revitalization. Who is behind it? What is it about? And how do Harlemites participate in the decision-making process? I'm not afraid of it. Uh, mm -hmm. To a large degree, we welcome all of this coming in. But I would very much like to suggest that I, Harlemites, and again, Harlemites, wherever they may be, ought to come in and participate in the process of how these decisions are being made and where things are going. It's not a new, it's, it's right now most Harlem leadership is under dramatic mm -hmm. attack in the media, uh, unprecedented mm -hmm. attack. The Harlem Urban Development Corporations, the Apollo Theater Foundations, the Inner City Broadcasting Corporations, the Consortium for Central Harlem Development, the Greater Harlem uh, Chamber of Commerce, on and on. Almost every major Harlem-based institution is under attack, mm -hmm. uh, and, it's, and it appears to me and to many other people that the purpose for this attack is so that we will not have a voice in the direction of Harlem's economic revitalization. Mm -hmm. Part of that, of course, is there's a different political uh, uh, control factor taking place in New York mm -hmm. now, statewide and citywide, uh, that is not as friendly mm -hmm. to people of color and certainly not very friendly to the community of Harlem uh, as its predecessors were. It's a very precarious time for Harlem, especially for people of color. So we need to get our act together. Well, the upper uh, Manhattan Empowerment Zone, which came out of the federal legislation sponsored by Congressman Rangel, is supposed to throw $300 million into the Harlem community over a 10-year period and under the leadership of Deborah Wright, who's the uh, chief executive officer, they've done some things to bring some businesses, mainly Harlem USA, which is going to be an entertainment shopping complex. They've done some things along 125th Street. They're doing some things along 116th Street, up in Washington Heights, et cetera. And this is basically state, federal, and city money being used as a lever to bring more money in. Now, when you have that particular type of structure, that is going to draw capital primarily from south of 125th Street, mainly from Wall Street and Times Square area. How do you balance that? Uh, is it possible for there to be more investment from the African-American community so that we can maintain more of the economic control of the geography we call Harlem? Well, first, uh, you start with Debbie Wright. Mm -hmm. Thank God that Debbie Wright is the president mm -hmm. of that organization at this particular point in time. Brilliant young lady uh, who knows how to do it, has been successful, and knows how to communicate with people. So they have the right leader. Mm -hmm. But as you said, 
the controlling factors come from three different components, mm -hmm. city, state, and Fed. As we know, those interests are not always working together. The stars aren't lined up. Absolutely. Two of them are Republican, one of them is Democrat. Yes. <laughs> and, and I'm not even so much caught up in, in the party politics, but do remember that when the empowerment zone was announced, and, and it's interesting in terms of that, but when it was announced, we had a Democratic mayor, we had a Democratic governor, we had a Democratic Congress when it was announced. Mm -hmm. And now, as we look around and we see the politics changing, there are different interests take, uh, out there now. And so they're not necessarily the persons who have been the greatest supporters of the interests of Harlem in the past. Mm -hmm. And so we need to be vigilant in looking at what they're doing. They're, the effort of reaching out to uh, 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 persons of color uh, uh, and persons of goodwill to invest could be done better. Debbie Wright is under awesome pressure to try to uh, uh, be all things to at least three competing and sometimes opposing interests. And so what we thought was something that would be working in unison, uh, mm -hmm. Debbie is just having to fight to keep it balanced mm -hmm. and uh, we need to support her. Mm -hmm. uh, but the empowerment zone is perhaps being given uh, too much uh, credence in terms of what it can and should do. The driving force behind Harlem's revitalization is the economic uh, 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 growth of New York City at this particular point in time and, and Harlem's proximity to Man in Manhattan to Midtown. So the growth factors we're going to come. Uh, the real estate principles are basically access and demand, demand and access. The accessibility for Harlem has been there. What is now catching up is the demand. So the, we need to make sure that we're just balancing this a little better, talking to each other a little better, and putting the right things in the right place. What works in East Harlem may not work on Washington Heights. What works on 116th Street might not work on 145th Street. But most importantly, if the people who are planning for Harlem do not know Harlem, or are not from Harlem, or, and are simply passing through, then they may be putting things that are just uh, uh, of their own temporary interest and not for our long-range benefit. Well, the focus of the Empowerment Zone has been on developing jobs. And one of the criticisms of some of the federal programs, like the urban development programs, was they focused on developing housing, which people couldn't afford because they didn't have jobs. They were focusing on social issues like education and health care, which I don't agree, which, which they thought other agencies should be dealing with. So basically, the Empowerment Zone program, as you know, has been focusing on attracting businesses to Harlem that will employ Harlem residents which then leads you to the question of, of training, because many of the uh, underemployed or unemployed in Harlem are unemployed or unemployed because they don't have the training. So that means that there needs to be an interaction between the community-based organizations, the Greater Harlem Chamber of Commerce, the schools, in order to, to do this. And the question that is, comes up is, to what extent Will we be able to attract enough people, African American, to Harlem with the skills and the willingness to contribute to the development of a community rather than just their own individual interests? Well, I've listened to the jobs game mm -hmm. for many years. Jobs, we're creating mm -hmm. jobs. Well, first and foremost, I want to know who, who are we creating jobs for? Mm -hmm. If we're creating jobs for people who live in that community, not just the, the, uh, the, the word service, but do they mm -hmm. live in that right. community in the main, then the, the, the disposable income will mm -hmm. circulate in that community. Mm -hmm. But if we're simply creating jobs and the people who get the jobs live somewhere else, then we are exporting mm -hmm. our income as opposed to importing. The, the, the other part of that, as you so well said, is we need to create the services mm -hmm. 
that are also needed, whether they are educational services, training services, social services, health care services, not just brick and mortar. Mm -hmm. and, and what I've seen uh, is too much emphasis on this whole commercial aspect mm -hmm. of it. With, so yes, there's a great, if you're focused on what's happening on 125th Street, as well we should, mm -hmm or 116th Street or 135th Street, that's great. But what's happening on 134th Street and 135th Street and 126th and 124th? I don't hear that much focus on those areas. Most, too, too much of the planning that is being done now, it appears to me, is not friendly to the long-term interests of the current residents of those respective areas. And so as a result, uh, I'm not sure if that which I see taking place in Harlem right now, I'm very pleased that Harlem USA is happening, I think it's a great project, uh, but I think we need to balance the development so we're developing minds, we're developing services, and we're developing a future for the residents. Uh, as we come to the close of the program, are you optimistic for Harlem? Are you extremely optimistic or do you have some concerns? Uh, I'm optimistic. Uh, I'm absolutely convinced that what needs to be done can be done. Uh, I think programs like this help it to get done. There needs to be a public discussion. Mm -hmm. What I, I'm concerned about is with the politics of the times where people are not talking to each other and it's oft times defined that whatever is in your best interest I must oppose be, because you're, you didn't support me or things of that nature. The small people who are the real people get hurt in the process. Mm -hmm. I'm very optimistic mm -hmm. because we've, we have to be optimistic and we're going to make it work. Okay, thanks Lloyd for being with us on today's African American Legends. One of the things we try to do is to provide a forum for communication about things that are happening in our community. Thanks again for being with us. Thank you, Sonana.